up? What up? What up, bro? We 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 uh we hella old today, bro. Was it eighty? Dude, eighty, man. Episode eighty, bro. Who knew? Whew. Who knew? I thought you would uh, break up with me before this. <laughs> <laughs> you know I got commitment issues. <laughs> so I'm like, you, you weren't wrong in that. <laughs> I was like, he's good to episode 17. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me like four months. I appreciate it. Bro. <laughs> I figured we was friends. You <laughs> so I was probably safe for about four months. I let you, you got down gently. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, I found somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I moved on to another block. <laughs> they say you suck, so uh, they, they only want me. They make me feel special. <laughs> make me feel special and wanted. Oh, Welcome man. back, everybody, to the Common Footprint Podcast. He is Juan, and I'm Sean. And every week we get together and have a good time. God damn it! Hell yeah! Talk about things going on in the world. Try to focus on things making an impact, whether they be good, bad, or otherwise. And we got something delicious for you guys today. Hit them with it. It's good, bro. And I'm feeling it. Oof, Dude, man. this is good. Boy, man. am I what, what are we with? Three in? We yeah, we three in. What's well, better than last week? Good, I got I got shit from the wife, and she goes, I heard last week's podcast, and you guys were like four or five in before you started. <laughs> and I was like, Well, we had to try the two different ones, and yeah. we couldn't decide which one was better. Yeah, you can't come up with a good recipe on the first go. You know, it's trial and error. You gotta. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> and the after effects are equally as important. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> what you got? What we got? Listen, man, this week we kept it simple for everybody who uh, complains about our uh, our super complicated um, recipes. So we made an old fashioned this week, but with cognac. So it's a cognac old fashioned. I mean, I, uh, we got to come up with a cool last name for this, though. This is good, man. Bro, it's delicious. And this is the first time I've tried this Remy. So we did it with this Remy uh, called the uh, Remy Prime Cellar Selection Number Sixteen, uh, and I don't I didn't know there was a difference, bro. But evidently there's a, there's a cognac fine champagne, so it's like a, a I guess a different level of cognac. But whatever it is, this shit is delicious. It's cool. and then we did uh, so we did two ounces of the Remy, we did uh, a dash of orange bitters, a dash of regular sort of um, Angostura bitters, uh, a half an ounce or so of simple syrup stirred it up poured it in a rocks glass and then we use a lemon wedge which made a big difference too man as the um as the garnish i use a, actually not a wedge a lemon peel sorry and yep. uh, hit the lemon peel with it man which gives it a nice little little scent in the way in. yeah it really does man and like you know how we've done and and i've learned a lot of this on you know on this podcast of, as we go through different drinks that scent that hits you before you take the drink is so like it, man, it's 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 underrated it really and is. I, and and in this one with the lemon peel like when you go to take the sip you get that citrus smell first and then the drink oh man it's so good so those of you guys who are you know cognac fans um and even if you're not if you're like whiskey fans for you know for an old for normal old-fashioned this is a, a little twist that uh, we think you'll enjoy. So yeah, check it out. Most definitely, man. Listen, this and this ain't. You don't want to put coke in this kind of this. This stuff sips really well by itself, or with this. Like an old fashioned is like the most I'd be willing to sort of go on it because you don't ruin a lot of the flavor with the old fashioned. You just yeah, this is good, bro. So good, man. Yeah, but yeah, man, shout out Remy. I, I've I've never. I mean, I've tried regular Remy Martin. I mean, it's okay. It's fine. Um, it's like doing regular Hennessy. It's not like mind blowing, but. Shit's good, man. Yeah, so check it out. Um, dude, we forgot to do the TikTok again, man. Yo, we stay, we stay. This is why these young bucks ain't catching on, us, bro. We gotta get on TikTok so we can so we can get our 16, 17 year old fan base up. <laughs> we sleeping on them, bro. Uh, uh, he meant twenty one year olds. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to do something nasty. I'm, I'm I said I want him to listen. I'm keeping the PC. <laughs> right, you got to be 18 or older because we say some wild shit. Yeah. No, it ain't for the saying, man. It's for the drinks, bro. Oh, good point. <laughs> the 21 uh, I didn't even man. think about that. That's how messed up I am. <laughs> 21 oh, and older. Man. 21 and older. Yeah. The, does anybody 21 and older be on TikTok? Actually, they do, man. Because TikTok, I find that whenever I scroll, it's either you either 12 or... Or you fifty two <laughs> talking about uh, uh, your OnlyFans? <laughs> yep, dude, everybody's on that shit now, yeah, man. Bro. Like, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the younger generation to go like, 
No, that's for old people. What, the TikTok? Yeah. Oh, you know it's about that. It's going to happen. It's, it's, it's on its way, bro. It's on its way. We're going to be on to the new shit <laughs> next year, whatever that is. It's popping. It's popping. All right, man. My carbon footprint this week is going out to Leah Thomas. And I don't know how y'all going to feel about this one. <laughs> Leah Thomas right now is dominating, dominating collegiate women swimming. Now... The twist of this story is Leah is transgender. Okay. And she goes to the University of Pennsylvania, which is an Ivy League school. Yeah, that is. Okay. She competed as a man two years ago. And so, like, no shit. She's crushing. Has she gone through hormone therapy and all okay, that? Okay. So the rule, I'm glad you brought that up. The rule behind it is you got to go through this hormone therapy, which is like a testosterone suppression therapy yeah, okay. for a year. Okay. So from what I understand, her times are not as good as when she was a man. But this still, they don't have to be. But they, <laughs> 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 they're still pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> bro it'd be like isaiah thomas versus candace parker he not the best nba player but he's still gonna smoke your best wmb <laughs> bro i'm waiting for this to happen in basketball bro <laughs> Dude, i can't wait till lebron wakes up one day and goes nah i feel like i'm a girl tonight <laughs> he's gonna be about 47 it's gonna be <laughs> You'll be like, I'm coming back. Scoring 262 points a game. <laughs> 47. Bro, coming out of retirement. I'm convinced Bruce Jenner could go run with the women now. <laughs> Sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bro. You, 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 oh, my God, bro. Oh my God, bro! Oh man! Oh. <laughs> so, why you set me up for this out of the gate, man? You know I can't behave when it comes to this, <laughs> dude. Is that? Uh, listen, I don't know enough about the hormone therapy thing. No, me it's neither. the one thing that I've always said. Okay, uh, let's set some rules where you go. Hey, m make them go to hormone. Do all you know? Do the whole thing. I don't know how much of a competitive advantage you still have there. I'm gonna assume it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, and especially so like this dude has been swimming for a long time right and and was you know competing as a man on the collegiate level and was posting good times as a as a guy as a matter of fact um it was like he was a six-time finalist in an ivy league championships including three runner-up performances at the 2019 meet so the dude was a a, a stud and so he's smoking dudes and right and so, dude, they, so there was there was one, and I and I don't think I wrote it down here, but like the second place woman was like thirty seconds behind him. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a different She's day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she finished tomorrow. <laughs> they left at the same time, and she finished tomorrow. Bro, you I know you're not a golfer. If you ever go on a golf course, bro, there's um there's tees according to skill set. Right? Okay. So there's like a, I don't know, there's a color designation to them, but essentially the let's say the blacks are like the pro tees are all the way in the back and they make the course longer, right? Like the distance of the course. Okay. And then so they progressively sort of move forward. The girl tees are usually from the girl to the black tee, which is like the the most there's usually like a hundred yard difference or two hundred. Really? Like it's massive, bro. There's a reason. There's why, a reason for bro. that. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, you're right. It's just so crazy to me that like we would listen. If you feel however you feel, bro, girl, woman, what like woman, yeah, man, I don't give whatever. a shit about give that, a shit, man. You be happy, bro. Like do you? I don't care, man. Like, but for sports, it's not for fair. Sports, it's not fair. Yeah, dude. or we got to come up with like you got to give them their own league. Fuck. I was just going like you can't. Fuck man, yeah, you might have to give them their own league because yeah, I, I just go, you can't make it gender based. No, because then it never goes the other way, right? How many how many no. women go are like zero oh, competing? I don't know any. Yeah, dude, zero. the number one women cyclist in the world right now, I'm pretty sure, is a transgender as well. And th wasn't the wasn't somebody like a, a weightlifting champion too yeah. that was a transgender? It's like, of course, 
Yeah. Of course you are. Listen, right now, bro, I'm trying to get into the Olympics in about four years. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I woke up feeling real feminine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was moody for no reason. We need some sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. So and it was funny. So they, um, so they interviewed uh, one of the athletes on the team who chose to remain anonymous, <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, like this coach, he really likes winning." <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can you imagine? Just like, oh, is it is it weird having her? Like, oh no, other than the dick out in the locker room, like she's just one of the gals. <laughs> the fuck sorry I, we have an issue with this little thing here today uh, there we go <laughs> like no nah, man other than the dick out <laughs> the locker room like she's just like the rest of us <laughs> and then they were saying that so like if God, if she swam the times that she did as a male she <laughs> would break like katie ledecky's record like what? Shatley, yeah bro which is which you Ledecky is like is the, like yeah that's like cream of the crop of Olympic swimming oh athletes. My God, bro. So yo, let's. Are, is that going to be allowed in the Olympics? Is, is she going to be allowed to compete as a woman? That's a great in question, the Olympics? man. I would hope not, right? Because again, not, nothing against her. I don't care. No. Like you want to do your thing. Yeah. The, okay. the, but but to compete in 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 sports, like you almost have to go. It's not gender based anymore. Now it's your your birth sex. Yeah, what like, like your it. biological right. genders? You know, it like, trips me out. Listen. Is it is that is that gender now? Like, I'm so confused, bro. Is it gender or is it sex? Because I don't know, right? Man. I, I really I feel like it's offensive. The one I know, I know, yeah, I but really I'm just know. going like, if you if if you were born like sexually, if you were born a male, you should only be able to compete as a male, unless like you said earlier, which you go create your own league. Yeah, because, like, I, again, like, I, to me, if you feel like whatever you feel like, good for you. I just don't know where you draw the line on the, um, on the I feel like a man or I feel like a woman. And then you separate. Because, honestly, I know they, they go to, like, hey, I don't want to. The gender construct is sort of something that we made up, right? So, do you go, hey, male and female, something that we just sort of made up. But also, like mother nature yeah, made really. something up right yeah, not we just really. called it male and female right? right you called it whatever you want but like at the end of the day one of the biologically given uh uh sets of traits happens to be predominantly like uh, uh, more dominant because it was meant to hunt and kill and whatever and, and protect family and yada 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 and the other one was has different skill sets that you know obviously like uh, the quote unquote male thing doesn't have so like right. like i feel like we, we get stuck on the label but it's like it doesn't matter what you call it at the end of the day the body sort of you were given so outwardly you feel like the gender construct that we created right like that's the argument i would make it's like hey you don't want to give in to society's norms but you are in your mind you're going hey society's dictation of a woman is what i feel like right right it's not and so and that's fine that's cool but then I think biologically, when you're talking about sports, man, this is the one that always irks me because I go, listen, uh, scientifically, you've been given a competitive advantage over right everyone else. Because you figure eventually, right, like if like in this and and this will, this is sort of if you call it a trend of of people feeling um, comfortable enough to come out, right, and and sort of claim their their sort of quote unquote rightful gender, eventually, the the those sporting events will just have them because they'll yeah. be crushing. They'll be cr- yeah, they're gonna it'll just be it'll just be all men. Dude, I, I think we might have talked about this on here before. The best argument I've ever heard for this and like the male female leagues, uh, a comedian named Akash Singh was like, "Yo, just just uh, sort of fight wokeness with wokeness and go. You know what? We're gonna get rid of gender leagues. Just it's NBA now." fuck it no more wba if you're good enough to get in yeah. you'll make the team and then he's gonna go and then there's never and gonna be a woman who's woman. good enough to right. make a team and then they're gonna be fighting about making a women's league like right it, it, and it's like yeah that's a valid point because then you go you fight it's a the, great point bro. yeah i was like that's actually a great point because you go yeah you know what we're gonna get rid of all the barriers let's just go there's one league now in basketball if you're good enough to make it you're good enough to get in like cool and then they're going to be complaining because they can't make the league for obvious reasons. Right. It's like, I, I don't know. I, I had this. Uh, was it you and I? We had an argument one time about, uh, I was like, I would take the number one high school boys team in uh, the oh, U.S. Oh, it was us. It was on here. Versus the WNBA champs. I would, I would take the, the, the high school boys team, bro, all day. 
Yeah, I mean, man, yeah. that would be yeah. And I remember you made that point of like these guys are like above the rim that they're playing above the yeah. rim. Dude, these, in, these in, kids in are all school. going to Kentucky next year, and and you figure like two of them are going to be number one draft or or uh, lottery picks in the NBA. I, yeah, I just don't know, man. Again, I I didn't do it. Uh, no, it makes whatever sense. you believe in, Mother Nature, God, uh, the, 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 take it up with him. <laughs> like it's just it's a competitive disadvantage. All right, so what so what do we think, man? I'm thinking I'm I'm liking the idea of the the league, you a, make separate a separate league. league. Yeah, but then do a, a you is league. a separate league? Do you make two leagues for men who used to be women? Yeah, or and women who used to be men? Do yep. you do it that way? Yeah. You have to. And then at what point do they sue <laughs> for being left out of the other leagues? Like? <laughs> well, you figure, like, if you're good enough to make, oh, no, well, then fuck, you know, no. No, no, because if I'm a guy, but I feel like a woman, but I don't. You, you, but what if you're really good Here's at the basketball? part that irks Can me, Can you though, not man? go in the NBA? I would think so. But you should be able if, to, If right? I'm a guy like this guy, right? or sorry, girl. Who's yep. in the women's swimming league? Wouldn't you, as a competitor, just we're getting, we're getting confused. with the best? I am, bro. I'm all over, <laughs> and I don't want to be offensive <laughs> while being offensive. <laughs> so, wouldn't you want the best competition? So, as this girl, right. uh, if I know I can compete with guys, wouldn't I just right. go compete there? Like, or is yes. it that hey, I want to I mean, compete with so. people who feel like me or look like me? Is that the Ish? I don't know. Yeah, like what? What? What's the goal? Or do I want to compete against the best competition? Because if I want to compete against the best competitions, and I stick to my sort of biological, um, I, I guess gender. Right. But if I no <laughs> sex, sex, yeah. See, bro, I don't know. Yeah, no, we 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 don't keep to this straight. I love y'all. Y'all do what y'all want. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, man, you get one crack at this. Be happy, bro. But yeah, yeah, I, like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, as yeah. a competitor, I would want to, I don't know, I think I would want to face the cream of the crop. <laughs> or as someone who wants to make a little bit of money and get the best sponsorship deals and maybe win a couple of trophies. I'm just saying, bro, tomorrow I might feel like a Felicia. That's all I'm saying, bro. Yeah. And <laughs> hey, man, you know what? It's, it, we're in an interesting time, right, where this stuff is 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 sort of more accepted. And, um, and we're going to go through some growing pains and we'll see where this, you know, we'll see where it uh We'll figure Where it, it shakes out. out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Just make some rules. Like, I, I like, I like, the, I like the whole fucking, hormone thing and yeah, all that. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah, sports. You know. Like, yeah. like seriously, man, and, and I think that if, especially in this country, and maybe in all countries, or maybe in most countries, we take sports so seriously, oh, yeah, and it's really not that fucking serious. It's not, but this just shows how lucky we are in this country, right? Like, how many countries in the world have sports leagues, right? Like, like take Europe out of the equation. I obviously know uh, soccer and all that stuff, but, right. like, how many countries around the world could you be really good at something with a ball and be a millionaire and, and uh, not even just a millionaire, generational money? From, like, yeah. it, it, just, it just shows how lucky we are here to just have those opportunities. Like, if you're... If you're you can say the about, dumbest about, about person any of in the, the first world countries, right? Absolutely, bro. If you're in Europe and you're good at kicking a ball, yep, it doesn't matter. Like uh, or driving a car. Now, driving a car is a little different, I guess. Uh, it's, it's the, like the Formula One stuff because you got to come from some affluence because it's expensive. But still, man, like uh, it just shows again as humans how far we've come. Where we're like, oh, we can go make money now to entertain people playing like a child's game. Yep, like, it's crazy, man. It's it's so nuts, dude. Why? Since you're on the sports thing, man, I don't want to. It's a good segue. Like, did you watch sports? This weekend for sports was just... Do you not have a common footprint? I do, man, but I felt like... All right, you I want, do you I, want to skip it? I'll get back to it, man. Just because I felt like uh, uh, we were touching on the sports thing. Mm -hmm. and it's just this weekend, man, was so dope sports-wise, man. Like, the UFC, you know, speaking I was of... In the, I was on the beach. Uh, you were on the beach? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You went to the, you went, you went to, to the beach yep. on Saturday? Bro. Saturday night UFC fight was wild. Amanda Nunez lost first fight ever, or first fight ever in the UFC. So what happened? Because I, I didn't see it. So like, it's normally she's knocking chicks. She out. is dominating. So people. I saw like a, a little clip of it, and the girl was trading shots with her. Had this great jab going. Caught her. Caught her good. Caught her good. That, that jab. She just didn't have an answer for it. But Nunez, was she as big as Nunez? Uh, smaller man I thought she would really? be way bigger but when they got into the ring like me and my brother were looking at it talking about it like wait like cause she looked really big but then when she got in the ring next to Nunez we went damn maybe Nunez is bigger than we thought because I when I was looking at her by herself I yep. went yo this chick is humongous like this this might get interesting and then when she sat next to Nunez I went oh wait a minute like Nunez was actually like two <laughs> inches taller oh wow had a bigger reach whatever. so it wasn't the size advantage I think Nunez just sort of slept on her 
Even even like listen, I think these they rematch and Nunez is gonna smoke her. Um, because even her reaction after the fact, it wasn't like you remember when Holly Holmes lost. Holly Holmes just looked devastated. Like she just when the first time Holly or uh, not Holly Holmes, not Holly sorry, Holmes, uh, Ronda uh, Rousey, Rousey lost to Holly Holmes. <clears throat> uh, when when Nunez got beat at the end, she was sort of she was like super sort of congratulatory and was just like, ah, I just I didn't have it today, man. I trained, but. I just wasn't there. Like, I just wasn't there. And she just looked disinterested. Right. I think she thought it was going to be so easy. Um, I I think if Amanda Nunez comes in locked in, just her reaction by it, the, the fact that she didn't seem like it didn't define her. You know, like some people, their, their, their careers like that probably define who they are to themselves. She didn't look like someone who's, like, lost herself in that. Like okay. It was kind of like, yeah, yeah, I love man. She, she was better than me today. Like, cool. Like, no tears, no thing, no like, oh, okay. excuses, no. Yeah, she was just like. Because Rousey, remember her, she went into, like, hiding. Yeah. Rousey looked devastated because Rousey looked like her self-worth was tied up yep. in that, right? Like, no, this wasn't that. Like, uh Nunez looked like she legitimately, and this is this is not to take away from Pena because Pena did her thing, like she did what she had to do. Um, she had to land the shots that she had to land, you know. Yep. So it was good, but I don't think this does to Nunez what what the loss did to Rousey. I just I just think she comes back and at least makes it way more competitive. Good man, because it, you know you find that a lot in in especially like in boxing, where like if you got these undefeated champions. And then when they end up losing, it's just it, it seems to be for most of them just is it this downward spiral to to retirement. Yeah, and and this I I don't think is gonna be that for Nunez. Like I think if anything, this may end up waking her up of like, yo, she's been so dominant that maybe she was like, Yeah, I can just sort of show up and right. I got this. It seemed like to me like she's one of those people who goes like, Oh no, 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 I gotta show up or or this shit's gonna happen. Right. So I would fully expect her to win in the next one because, dude, Pena looked nervous. I mean, obviously, as she should. Like uh, uh, when when I saw her sort of walk in and the way she was sort of pacing in the ring, I was like, oh, I don't like her body language. Like this chick's oh, about to really? drop real fast, and and it looked like that. It looked shaky at first. She landed like one or two shots that I think just sort of built up her confidence, and then from there, man, then she wound up choking her out, bro. She wound up uh, submitting oh, her. So wow. it was like, uh, it was a good fight, man. It was a good, you know, Poirier lost to to Oliveira, uh, which was also a good fight. I'd I'd pay for a number two of that, um, dude. Sean O'Malley, you know, it's funny, man. Me and my brother, we were looking at. My brother sent me this thing. It was this parlay. If you bet all the underdogs, let's say you put in a hundred bucks, you yep. won like fifty eight hundred. Oh, I nice. was literally doing the bet because so the bet was. Uh, so O'Malley had to lose, Nunez had to lose, and Poirier had to lose. Oh my gosh, bro! Yeah, and, but it's a hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. Who it. cares? Yeah. I was, so I was doing it, and O'Malley knocks out the guy. So I backed oh, out literally shit. as I'm placing the bet, which I. But the other two people won. So it would have been one of those crazy things where fucking Sean O'Malley cost me fifty eight hundred dollars. I would have been pissed. <laughs> <laughs> But that was good, dude. And I know you're not an F1 fan per se, but Sunday, if you're Bro. an F1 fan, oh my god! So man. I didn't. I'm not an F1 fan at all. I happened to be changing the channel with like two minutes left in this race, and the the only reason why it stopped because I saw it. I thought about you, <laughs> and then the announcers were going nuts, and there was two cars that I saw that was sort of side by side. Trying to get, and then there was like like the one dude was in front, the, the other guy came on the side, but then around the curve, the other dude kind of like, so, and then so I was like, oh shit, okay, it's must be towards the end, and and the guys were like super excited announcing, and then it turns out that the guy who wasn't supposed to win won, <sighs> dude. So talk to me about, it. dude. We t- listen. So, so first of all, the way Formula One works is sort of like European soccer. It's uh, you get points. Um, I guess it's soccer here too. So, so you get points for every win or tie or whatever, like or, or placing, right? So think of a car race. Depending on the place you come in, like one through ten, you get a certain amount of points. At the end of the season, the driver with the most points wins the championship, right? Okay. So you could lock in a championship with like two races to go or three races to go, depending on how dominant you have been right. throughout the season. Formula One is very sort of like one sided. Like the best drivers of the best cars smoke everybody. It's not even close. So Lewis Hamilton has won like I think it's seven straight Formula One titles. Was he the second place dude? The, he was the, the one Mercedes who came car? in second in the Mercedes car. Okay. So he's won like seven straight titles. So this would have been a Max Verstappen who 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 uh who is on the other dominant team right now, which is Red Bull Racing, uh and like Honda Racing. Honda, yeah. Yeah, they um 
so they were tied. So they're going into the last race tied for first place. So automatically, Ooh, okay. whoever of those two comes in ahead of the other one yep. wins the championship. But it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to be one and two, them two. It's that's how dominant they are. Like it's like it's not even like hey, if you come in fifth and sixth, no, no, no. you're gonna assume these guys they're one and two. Right. It's just how is how is it gonna get to one and two, right? So they go into the last week or the last race of the season with being tied. So there's already sort of the drama behind that. Lewis Hamilton. His car is significantly faster than everybody else's on Sundays. He is so far ahead. It's not even fair. It's like everyone else is standing still. So even when he fell behind, he just passed people like they were standing still. Really? And then he leads the whole race. The whole race, bro. So how does that happen, bro? His Dude, because Formula One is if you have the most amount of money, then you can hire the best engineers. You can buy the best product. You can, like, it's just, you can, uh, like. They don't have a salary cap? Nope. (laughs) Dude, I was actually thinking about that Sunday going, yo, how do you make this sport Mm, more more, fair? Yeah, more even. Like, do you go, hey, there's a cap on how much you can spend on the car? And maybe you change that per week, depending on the track, so you can cater the car to the track. Like I don't, I don't know. You have to do something, but literally, no one has a shot that's not Red Bull or Mercedes, and that's going to be the same next year. Like it's not, dude. I think third place was like Ferrari. They're like a hundred and something points away from the. Oh wow! For, it, it's and I mean, to t- hundred points away, dude. That's like that's like a difference between them winning ten races, like first place ten. I mean, that's how much more dominant the rest of the uh, of of uh, Mercedes. Oh, are, and right. It's so crazy. But anyway, so this so Hamilton's leading the whole race. It's pretty much he won. Like you need a miracle. It's because this is the other thing in Formula One. If you're in first, so this is why the the qualifying is so important. If you're in first place. Again, if you're Lewis Hamilton and you're in first place, no one's passing you because you have the clean air in the front. You have all like all this stuff with racing that that sort of matters. Like you're just gone. Like everyone's just chasing you, and right. no one's catching up. Like you, they have to hope for you to wreck or you have a bad pit stop. So this is where all these little things come into play. Yep. Like your pit stop takes one second too long, it's a wrap. Like stuff like that. So anyway, Lewis Hamilton's losing the whole race. He's gonna win. There's no if ands about it. Someone crashes. Some obscure fucking driver, some shitty team, uh, uh, Williams Racing, which I think is always in the, the second or third to last. Like it's always Haas and Williams last. They just they're trash. Uh, this guy wrecks <laughs> with like eight laps to go or something okay. like that. So because he wrecks, they pull out the caution car, kind of like NASCAR yes. or whatever. Anyway, so they have to loop around slowly behind his caution car. Like you're not allowed to race, quote unquote, right? Like no one can overpass or whatever. So you just sit there in this thing while they clean up the track. You can end a race like that. So if whoever's in first place, like you just luck out, there was this wreck, they're cleaning up, you're just in first place. Now you don't really have to race. You're going like 50 really? miles. Yes. So you can end. So why, now there's. Why all wouldn't this. they just stop the race? They, it's just. I mean, it's just not the rules. Yeah, it's just not how they do the rule. But Formula One is sort of liberal in how they sort of can interpret certain things and do certain things, which I. Listen, this is super controversial, and I expect Mercedes to take this to court. But so what they do is like, so let's say, dude, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, who were one and two, yep. lapped the third, fourth, fifth place cars, <laughs> lapped them. Again, this is how dominant they are. <laughs> so now those two, those like four or five cars are in between place one and place two. So Lewis Hamilton, and then there's four cars or five cars behind Lewis Hamilton who are a whole lap behind. Okay. So, so Max Verstappen is like six cars behind him, but he's in second place. So anyway, so because of the stoppage, they're trying to figure out what do you do? Like having to overcome those cars is hard, right? Like you have yeah, to get past yeah, them. Right. And a lot of the times out of like sportsmanship, some of these guys just move out of your way. Yep. But you still got to go through these cars, whatever. Anyway, so while they're on this caution thing, the the F1 sort of like the, the their commissioner, so to speak, makes like a call where normally you can go, hey, everybody who's down a lap, just go. Just, okay. Like go ahead or just fall back. And basically let the people let these on the two guys lap go. go. What he did was basically like, yo, those guys in between. So normally it's all or nothing. So you either let everybody just lap and then fall back. or So what he did was like in the middle, like it's lap. Let's say lap 57 is about to end. He just goes, the other cars just go ahead. The guys between Max and Lewis. And then it's basically like, here's the last lap for the fucking title. Max and Lewis, like you guys go at it. But this is like, no one's stopping, right? So these guys are just looping. So it goes from like, all right, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Suddenly you see the the sort of the caution car go off. Uh, um, and then those four cars sort of drive off ahead of them. Um, so they let them pass. And then it's like, they get to uh, uh, the finish line and it's like, go. It's almost like a drag race to the end between those two. Right. And because of that, Max got his shot to do. So it's like literally. So he was b- before this whole caution shit. He was far behind. He was. F- he was. He was far still enough. second, but he was far yeah, behind. Yeah, he was like ten seconds behind him or something. Oh, like that. So it's it, hard. He to wasn't catch. catching. He's up. not going to catch up. And so, and then here's the other thing that I think is discounted. 
uh, and again, this is not to get too technical. Max's team made a good call during that whole caution. You can pit, and then you get back in the same spot you were in. So, you, so they pitted and they changed the tires on the car. Yeah. That if you get into a drag race, sort of these tires are going to be better than Lewis Hamilton. Lewis n- didn't stop for tires for like since like uh, I don't know. Let's say lap fifteen, and they're on lap fifty eight. That's sort of unheard of. Like so, even Lewis throughout the race is going like there was another point where there was sort of a stoppage, and he's like, "Yo, you guys aren't going to pull me in." And his pit crew is like, "No, stay out there. We don't want to lose that position because basically, if Max gets oh, it, you're going to have to wow. fight him for it." Sort right. of thing. So there's like two times during a race where Lewis is like, "Yo, you guys serious? You guys are going to keep me in?" They're like, "Nope, keep going." And it's just like, "Okay." Dude, that decision, I think, costs Lewis that title because in that drag race, Lewis doesn't have the right tires, which, again, matter when you're making that move around those turns yep. around the curb. So the, the soft tires versus the hard tires made a huge difference to Max Verstappen because Lewis has the obviously faster car. No doubt about it. And anyway, dude, it, so it comes down to one mile at the end of the race on fucking cars going 200 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure that's so when I turned it on oh, with like one yelling. mile left. Yeah, it was one. It was, it, it, yeah, <laughs> they were yelling. It was literally because the announcers go from, yeah, we don't know. Damn, we're going to end under this. I guess Lewis Hamilton's the champion. Da, da, da. It's like, oh, what's this? They're waving these guys off. Blah, 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 blah. And then they sort of wave like the checkered flag, which is like, all right, last lap. Yeah. And then they're side by side. So it's like last lap, Max isn't allowed to pass him until they sort of like say go kind of thing. And so he's like a car length behind him. So you can see both of them sort of like revving it up. It's literally a drag race with these fucking ridiculous cars, bro. For my, I was screaming at nine in the morning on a Sunday. I'm like four hours of sleep. Just like go because I was rooting for Max, man. And so it, it, because the fucking show has turned me into a fan of, of, of uh, F1. But I'm this like, is on, this is a show on, on, on Netflix. Dude, Netflix, Netflix must it. have been salivating at the mouth. As oh, this my God. Going on, on, oh my god! But yeah, I took too much time on F one, so so a bunch of people. We just <laughs> lost a shit ton of list. Uh, I was geeking out so hard. I'm like, yo, to go from UFC, I wake up five hours later to watch this. I was like, this is a crazy sports weekend. And then I watched your, your boys on Sunday night, which was at least entertaining. The first the half, first half. Three quarters ish, <laughs> bro. These guys. My bears, man. Goodness gracious, man. Can you just fire everybody, though? <laughs> So they, it was a good game, right? So it was they a went fun game. Yeah, so man. so it was a good it was a good half anyway. They went in they went in leading uh 27-21 at the half. And then the game I turned it off when it was 45-27. So that indicates okay. that they didn't score at all in the second half. Would they get like did they, uh, did they 30. 30 30? Okay, so they got like a field goal. So this fucker kicks a field goal at some point in the fourth quarter. Yeah, why? why? Yeah, why? Just, yeah, for, just for did, that, you should did, be did fine. Did you know you need to score more points than the other team? Man? <laughs> Maybe he don't know. I, I do suspect this is his last year. It has to be. Yeah, bro. I do think. It has to be him um, and then uh, Alan Robinson, which is, you know, he's a phenomenal receiver. The guy just looked disinterested, bro. There was there was a play when um, Justin Fields takes off running and Alan Robinson is, is streaking down the field. You know, because he's going out for a pass, right? But but he then it becomes a quarterback run, and he points to the guy like, "Yo, block!" And this dude does like a ole on his oh. ass and just keeps going, like like he doesn't even care. And the guy comes back, doesn't hit Justin Fields, Justin Fields runs out of bounds, whatever. But yeah, man, like the 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 season's over, bro. Like yeah. just stop it. Justin already. looks like he'll be okay though. I think so. I did like how I, I was unsure about him. Uh, even at Ohio State, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I feel a certain way about these college QBs who play for these big time schools who are athletic like that. I'm like, yeah, you're you you always have the best sort of everything around you, so you're gonna look great, um, and you're athletic, right? But he's looked good, man. He had the one pick where where he did the typical rookie thing where he stared yeah, down the, the receiver, the pick six. yeah, yeah. And, and the and the corner kind of sat on it, like, all right, bro, if you're gonna look at him the whole yep. time, I'm out. Um, but everything else, man, I felt like yeah, he made throws, like big time throws. He he knew when to use his legs and when not to. Like I'm like, you know what, man, I think I think he's gonna be okay. You just gotta get him the right coach. Get him the right coach, bro. I feel like the Bears need to do what like man, these guys like the Sean McVeighs and the Cliff Kingsbury's and you get these dynamic offenses, man. These guys I mean listen, Bill Belichick is still doing his thing, but these young coaches, man, are are like creating these crazy offenses that you can't stop. They're putting yeah. up thirty, forty points a game, man. They're fun to watch. Did you watch the second half of the game? So I watched like some of the thirty ads. Okay, so second half of the game, obviously the Bears aren't doing shit. So it actually just becomes, unless you're a Packer fan, it just becomes. Uh, it's not even interesting anymore. Scrimmage, <laughs> fucking Chris Collinsworth and Al Michaels start talking about they just like Aaron Rodgers, and he's just like 
so honest and he must have gotten like um he must have he must have uh talked to the ownership and maybe he was thinking about leaving before but maybe he's not now and how great and oh my god bro i was like I man somebody go down there and blow him please yeah are they seriously dude yeah dude, i actually nuts, think he leaves dude. this year anyway you think so uh, Piss- Aaron Piss- Rogers, Pittsburgh? i wouldn't be shocked that would make sense that or i felt like uh san fran or uh yeah, i think you know san fran i mean garoppolo is fine um i don't know if the other guy trey lance is is going to do anything but I can see that. I can see you go like, ah, oh, we'll get, yeah, you know, Rogers. two or three good years out of him. Yeah, I'll take Aaron Rodgers over yeah. over Garoppolo and over Trey most Lance. over most. You'd be like, hey, Trey, sit behind Aaron Rodgers for yeah, yeah absolutely, dude. Uh, dude. The steel dude, Ben's done. I've never seen someone fall off the cliff like that, or I can't remember the last time I saw someone fall off the cliff yeah, he's like finished, that, bro. who was at the top of their game. He's done, and I forget that he's like they they showed the thing this week. He's thirty nine, and you're yeah. like, okay, for an NFL quarterback, I think Brady has sort of spoiled us and Drew Brees and all that who played into their forties. Brady's what forty four? Yeah. Or 42? 44. And he, and Is he 44? He, I think he's 44, dude. He's got to be the league MVP right now. Bro. He has to be, right? He's three years younger than me, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am not playing football. Right <laughs> yeah, not we know even, you can't race your kids on the beach. Not even with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he's 44. And I would argue today he's the league MVP, right? He has to be. He's like leading the league in touchdown passes, right? In yards. And he's like going off. Yeah, and he know. led them on like a game winning. Oh man, that was a, that OT. was phenomenal game. It's just I'm like, but that was actually. I mean, not listen. I I I root for him to win now, but just because you, you just go, what he's doing at his age is unbelievable. But the Bills came back in that game, and and I was like, oh shit, man. Like I was kind of rooting for them, but then when you go. Yo, like that's it. Like they go into overtime, and fucking Brady hits the guy who he hasn't hit all game. And he goes for a touchdown. Like is kid it's from crazy. UCF, right? Is I par- don't know. Is that, is that right? I think he's from UCF, man. He makes some big plays at UCF too. Shout, shout out to UCF, shout man. Out, man. Yeah, shout Pulling out to the Knights, baby. Players, Let's go. Bro. But dude, shout out to fucking Brady doing that shit at forty-four, yeah. man. God, did you watch the game last bro. night? I I did watch some of it, not all of it. Like towards the end, I I uh, I think I saw the last like three four minutes. Yeah. Um. So when when they sort of had that, they recovered the onside kick and all that. Saw that part, which uh, never works, and somehow and somehow it did for them. Yeah. There were so many sort of bad decisions there, man. The only thing that I want to point out is that there was a point towards the end of the game, and I was it was funny because I had the TV on. I'm doing research for the show. And I just hear this voice, this voice yelling from the TV. And I had it kind of low. And it's this guy, I think he was yelling defense, but I guess he was sitting close to where the announcers are not like, like the, who, who's the, the two guys? Oh, uh, it's the one yeah. of the, it's the guy from ESPN. Yeah. Uh, ah, shit, I can't remember. Is it Steve Levy? And uh, no, right. One of the guys is on like yeah, get up in the morning. Yeah. I can't remember. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I don't need to yeah. Shout out, shout out, to, shout out to those guys. They're not man. good, though. Well, you know what, man? I don't like the Mannings. I know you do. I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I prefer to listen to them. The, the two normal guys. Listen uh, to me. I think the biggest mistake ESPN made: roll out a fucking Brinks truck for Tony Romo, bro. Just whatever he wants, oh, bro. Yeah. Just give it to I, him. I, yeah, I love him. Yeah. I love his stuff, man. You, you would have made Monday Night Football must watch. I think with Tony Romo, no matter who was playing. But yeah, yeah, I can get down with that. But mm-hmm. so this guy. There's like this dude just yelling and, and, and you can hear him in the broadcast. And so I immediately go on Twitter and hit up like Monday Night Football and you know, the comments uh. are like, this guy is in my fucking living room. <laughs> 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 and it's like, would somebody tell this guy to shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Twitter never disappoints, bro. It's still my favorite social media app, bro. I go to Twitter. Dude, it's funny. With sports, I immediately go to Twitter to, to either talk shit or just read people talking yep. shit. It's so good. The, even after the F1 <laughs> shit, the amount of memes that were there like 30 seconds later, gold. Gold, bro. I love Oh, my God, bro. People on Twitter are so People, funny. yo, it, it surprises me how, like, people, so many people's minds, like, think so quickly. Yeah. And like you said, the, the memes are always hilarious. Oh my God, and it's like, bro. when did you think of that? And how did you get that up so quick? <laughs> yeah, you go like, bro, that shit just happened. And you had a meme on deck 
<laughs> like it just, bro. You know, it just makes me realize how many, uh, how many really funny, like whimsy people, or, like whimsical people are out there, like uh, um, that just wouldn't have gotten an opportunity to sort of showcase that, you know, twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. But because of this space we're in right now, you know, everybody sort of gets their moment to put out shit out there. Dude, so many of us are like so creative and hilarious and like it's dope to see that sort of come through from yeah, some it, like man. John Schmo four 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 five seven and I'm like <laughs> fucking hysterically <laughs> laughing, bro. <laughs> it's so good, man. All right, man. Hit me with your carbon footprint, man. Uh, yeah, like, bro. Carbon footprint was homeboy from uh, uh, Better dot com. You see the CEO from Better dot com, bro? I, I think I saw a headline. Yo, he fires. How many people was it? Nine hundred employees <laughs> at the same time, which I would say is hella efficient. <laughs> However, <laughs> he did it over Zoom, like on the same call. Basically, like, hey, if you got invited to this call, you were unfortunate. Like, we're letting you go. Like all of them, so they're all finding out together. All nine hundred of them on Man, a Zoom call. That has to be horrible, right? But if you're in his shoes, what is the alternative? Don't these people got managers they report to, bro? Yeah, I suppose. But when you got nine hundred of them, like, are you are are you are you communicating that down to their direct managers, and then yeah, they're and firing that them? Firing them, I would think. Man, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, that that actually makes sense. Yeah. But I go. That's exactly what has to happen. But if, and and I, what I didn't see, maybe you know, is there anything like? Did they get any kind of like money to 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 leave? Did they get you know insurance for thirty days, sixty days, ninety days? I don't think so because they were like laid off. So the way he did it was sort of like layoffs. Okay. And, and typically, that's a very precise uh wording because i I don't think you um well no i guess you do sort of pay people out if you lay them off it doesn't say i don't i don't think so no no but he sort of got um i don't know he was getting shit about it obviously but then he also the the board so he's the ceo he's also the founder of the company the board uh put him sort of on leave right now uh because obviously all the backlash and the shit that they're thinking about. And now they're like, yeah, that was a bad idea to do it over Zoom. It's like, no, duh, motherfucker. Like, why would you? You know, it's funny. Like, I, I, I saw this and it takes me to like, what, uh, I think about like what we were talking about earlier about like just there's these social skills, man, that some of us take for granted oh, yes. because we just assume they're sort of the norm. As someone who's clearly smart, right? You're smart enough to have, have built this company to be the CEO and run it and do all this stuff. But you don't know how to read a room or to lack the social skills to realize, like, nothing told you, like, hey, this is probably not a great idea. Also, there's you're not making this decision in a silo. I, I would hope not. Right. There's other executives in a room with you when you're having these discussions and you're making these decisions. And all of you had to simultaneously agree, like, yeah, we'll do it over that Zoom call. I wonder, though, is is some of that like the other executives just going this is the guy. This is my boss. Do I not want to disagree with him in this in this forum? And that could be. I haven't seen any of them come out, and I guess you wouldn't. Uh, maybe in fear of your job of saying like, "Yeah, we try to talk him out of that." Listen, right. I, I have been in rooms with people who have sort of made decisions that I'm not saying they were the wrong ones. I just disagreed with them. Uh, and I know I'm, I mean, this won't shock you about, I was pretty vocal. I just find it hard to believe that not one person in there went, eh, this is kind of a shitty way to do it. Dude, again, you think, <laughs> you think about, you know, and, and Juan and I were talking about this earlier. Um, there's, there's not that many people that have people skills. So not that many folks in, in upper level management that have people skills. And that shit is so important. And I think the people that do have people skills don't realize it and they don't value it because they think that it's just normal. It's not. If you guys think about the people that you work for or your managers or even people that you work with, there's not many people that you can go. Yes, that person can own a room. Yes, that person can deliver bad news, good news, what have you like that shit is it matters, man. And and, and and we need more people like that, right? Like it's not always skill based. A skill can be, I know how to deal with people. 
and I know how to get the best out of people, even if I don't know exactly what and how they do it. Yeah. No, I think that's 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 spot on, man, because you can teach sort of like the technicality of things and um, how to go through the motions of certain jobs. But like, I think the people aspect is something that you, you can certainly teach. Um, but some of us are just, um, uh, you know, like just like some of us are introverts or extroverts or, um, you know, uh, some people are funny. Some people are super serious or good at like, I think that when you have something that like just naturally comes to you, I think it's hard to recognize that as a skill because you didn't like learn it or you didn't pay you money didn't learn to learn it, it right. or, yep. you know, or, or you saw, you feel like you didn't learn it. You sort of did, but you, you didn't realize did. you yep. were doing it. Um, That's it, bro. yeah, it, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of acknowledge that. And I wonder if this is, uh, uh, like the product of how many smart people out there just completely lack social awareness and social skills to go hey man like this is a really stupid idea like even as a human being man listen i during covid man i i did have to end up letting go of someone through phone call and that shit bothered the hell out like i hated it but there because of the circumstance in the middle of covid i like obviously there was a few people during it but i had to do one specific person and i had to do them over the phone and i hated it like i beat myself up over that one more than all of them because I hated the fact of I couldn't like look this person in the eye and be there face to face and have that conversation of something that is potentially life changing for someone. Right. Like, right. Granted, they took it way better than I thought they would. And the conversation, like in hindsight, was actually for something like that. It was actually probably the most positive way it sort of could have played itself out. But I, at the time, I remember going, as much as this sucks, like, just going through that, it's fucking terrible, bro. Because I think if you've ever managed people, firing people is not fun, man. And especially no, firing not. people who didn't deserve it, like, who was just the circumstance of this, like, pandemic we were in. Uh, and then having to do that over a phone call, it's fucking horrible. And so, like, just the idea that this guy did that to 900 people over a phone call is crazy to me. Because like, I'm like, man, I had to do one over the phone, and I was beating myself up. I can't imagine, like doing that to 900 people and then being like yeah sorry and then yeah hit up hr for any question you have click like hang up right like, i just as much as uncomfortable as it is uh i just feel like you people deserve that much of you like you know we talk about this all the time like everybody wants the 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 maybe the pay or the recognition or whatever of what comes with certain positions but there are moments like that where you go no no like do this this shit this is what you're there for this sucks like no one signs up to do the hard shit right and so i think to me it just seemed like such a bitch ass way to go about it just seems sort of like cowardly and 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 also the other part of me just thought maybe this guy's so smart uh, from a academic standpoint, that socially he just lacked the awareness to go. Yeah, this isn't a very like nice thing to do. Uh, but the fact that, dude, and, and I and I love that you said that because, like, it it shows like y the 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 human part of you, right? Like, I, I I would I would venture to say that most folks that are in that position would go, I'm glad I didn't have to face that person. Yeah, I think not, like I said, not not you, right? So like, and this is what I was telling you earlier, and before we went on the air, it's like that's the piece that makes you you, and makes you valuable to organizations because you're the guy that goes, I'm not, you know what? I'm not gonna hide behind anybody. I'm not gonna call you. Like I want to face you face to face. I want, you know, I want that 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 human aspect where somebody will go like, I don't want to do it. Let HR do it, you know, make a phone call, send an email. Dude, that's that's the piece right there, bro. That's that's the shit that I was telling you earlier, man. Yeah, I, I feel like, like and again, this goes like to the conversation we're having before. Like, it, it just seems like it seems normal. It seems normal. And it's it, not. It, it seems like the <laughs> listen, you know, I, I'm not the moral police, bro. But I think as a person like. I don't know, man. I have to be able to like sort of live with myself and also like face you and even like I can't want the good and then not take the bad. Right? I can't want to have the conversation where I'm like, yo, I'm promoting you, right? Or you're getting a raise or whatever. And then on the flip side of that, not get the the shitty part of it, right? I think it's just something you sort of innately have to accept is like, yo, I get the cool part of this job. I also get the really shitty parts of this job. Yep. And they're why people don't like want to do them, right? Because it's, it's fucking sucks to do stuff like that. I just, man, I I just can't imagine as a person like not i don't know man not wanting to 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 do that like i can see the logic behind going get this over in one shot it's not in people blah, blah, blah. i could i would want to do that 
I wouldn't let myself do that because I would go as much as this sucks. Because listen, I fucking lost sleep, beat myself up over you know a handful of people. I can't imagine doing 900 people like that has to suck. So I like I would I I'd like to think this guy was just sort of going like let me just rip this bandaid off. I do them all at once. Blah blah blah. It's just that you can't be that. You don't make it to that position in life, man, without having at least the wherewithal to understand, like, yeah, that's not the right thing to do. Like, it's the easy thing to do, and fuck, I really want to just take the the quick and rip this off, but it it's just, I find it hard to believe that no one in that room went, bro, this is sort of a shitty way to do this. Even the board of directors now, I'm going, you don't let go of 900 people without the board knowing about it ahead of time, and no one goes, hey, man, so how are you going to carry this out? Like, what's the game plan here? Because that's... That's something mass layoffs like that at a company, man. They don't you don't wake up one day and go, yeah, here's what we're doing. Uh, there's a planning that goes into that because there's logistics involved in that. You know, to your point about if they were all paid out, right? There's, right. there's H- a whole HR's process involved. Yeah, right, HR's yep. involved. The finances involved. Like, there's a whole process behind that that goes, okay, who are we paying out? What are we paying out? What's the rule? Like, you know, what's that going to cost us? Like, what are we? You know, like this had to be thought out. And there was meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. Right. And after all those meetings, people said, yep, yep cool, man. Zoom, Do whatever Zoom Zoom. Sounds good. So <laughs> stupid. So anyway. What's fuck, that What's that company? Fuck them. Better.com. Yeah, fuck better.com. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them. Uh, I know his last name is Garg, uh, uh, CEO of better.com. You know what? Don't waste your time. Yeah, no, None of us use better.com. We never will. I don't even know uh, what that is. <laughs> What do they do? Guess what? It's not today. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to rename it worse.com. <laughs> Let me check if that uh, domain is open. <laughs> oh, man. What a dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me hit you up with this story right here, man. We're going to take it. We're going to take it um, in a different direction. There was a British guy who had a slip and fall. And he slipped and fall onto a World War II era tank shell. <laughs> Do I want to know where it landed? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to the hospital because this tank shell went up his ass. Yo, that's a big ass shell. Dude, dude. These, these are like tank piercing shells. Okay, so this guy, he he basically like he collects um this type of, you know, ammunition and and maybe like uh uh old war like memorabilia what have you. He claims that he was cleaning this stuff and he <laughs> slipped and fell and this stuff this this shell went into his ass and he couldn't get it out. So he slipped and he slipped fell. and fell. So when he gets to the hospital when they realize what it is, they have to call in the bomb squad. <laughs> <laughs> so many places to go. <laughs> so the guy is sticking to his story, man. Good, oh good, good for him, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yo, like people, dudes, women, whatever like to put shit in their ass yeah we all got weird shit let me tell you something man when i was in the marine corps um <laughs> the, <laughs> the <laughs> why, why the are you laughing you got a story. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy so we used to have and and, and, and in the marine base that we were on we had one navy guy and he was the corpsman and the corpsman is kind of like we used to call him doc so he was he was sort of like the uh the i don't know like the he wasn't a doctor but if it was like minor shit you can go to him and he would be like oh yeah like you know take this take a motrin he's a nurse yeah kind of <laughs> he's like you know here's he a motrin 800 that shit hurts him but take this right so he showed me x-rays one time uh, <laughs> i'm sorry of people that had put shit like in their ass. Um, he showed me an X-ray of a fucking like like a Lysol can. So appar- apparently, when you put stuff in your ass, like if you don't leave some of it out, 
it's the shit sucked gets in, sucked though. in. Yeah, yeah, it's sucked in and then it's it's lost. Yeah, there's a reason butt plugs have that like <laughs> they got the they got the the, the plug piece. the plug piece. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The reason it's called the plug. <laughs> yeah, dude. So I remember, I remember the when I was reading the story, man, it brought me back to that. Cause I was like, I remember the spray can, like the X-ray of the person with the fucking like like Lysol can in his ass, and then he showed us a few, man. But the one that I remember that one, and I remember a a dude had put tweezers in his penis. In wait wait in, wait, 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 yeah, wait wait oh yes bro like like the pee hole yes. He put tweezers. So the so the X ray was of the guy's penis with a uh, tweezers inside. I'm impressed. How big was this guy's wanker, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Dude, walk me through that. I think I'm only getting one side of the, the tweezers in there. The tweezers. Yeah, like, <laughs> so the tweezers might be bigger than the penis for me. <laughs> you got it through the hole, bro. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides? You must have squeezed that shit I real might, hard. I might be able to get the tip in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you got both sides in there, bro? Shout out to that guy. Yeah, dude, man. And so it, it just brought me back to that. And I'm just like, man, people like to do like to do weird shit, man. And hey, Listen, you know, man, I don't more judge. Power to you. I just say, you know, the same rule applies to everything else in life. Yeah, bro, be smart when being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we all do stupid things. I do stupid things. I tried to use common sense and apply that <laughs> in my stupid, in my shenanigans, dude. I'm ch- bro, hey, this is like the size. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to give like context, like people listening who don't know what like a like a tank piercing shell looks like. I'm thinking of like you know those thermos things that that oh, you know, like super. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like three of those. Put no. together, is right? It really? Is it? It's gotta be it like that big, dude. No. I don't know, man. It's World War Two, man. It's we don't World know what Okay, so maybe it's like on. one and a half. But two, it whatever. said it said that it was like it was like a tank piercing shell. It's big, bro. So it has to be big. That's big, dude. That's like a that's like two champagne. It's like bottles. getting fisted. That's bigger, bro. It's bigger than getting fisted. And fist, you take that like nothing. The forearm. Bro. This little this little eighty pound girl is taking fists. <laughs> you <laughs> you gotta aim higher, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can Google that right now. Uh, it's, it's somebody on the internet way. I'm an amateur. <laughs> <It's like laughs> I think I don't, bro. I'm, I gotta find it. My brother sent me some wash shit this week. I don't know why, but it was like your asshole will stretch. It was something like seven inches, or eight inches, something like that, and then it'll contract again. But you could essentially fit something that Hold wide on. in it. I don't remember what the context Wait, was. Bro. I'm gonna pull it up right now because it sounds he weird when I'm sent telling you, the you story. this. Yeah, yeah. Me and my brother just send each other memes all day. <laughs> <laughs> we literally sent so I'm, I'm gonna find the meme i know i have it still bro but it was essentially like uh it was one of those did you know and then it's like the human ass can stretch like blah 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 bro dude, yeah me and my brother we send each other way too many memes i'm like 1500 memes and and i still haven't found it see they might have taken it out bro because people were trying it yeah see there's one here that's deleted i bet you that was it <laughs> because people were trying it so the internet be deleting shit now, bro, whenever people try it. So what did you say? Oh, here is- it is. Actually, I got it. It says, the human anus can stretch up to seven inches before taking damage. A raccoon can squeeze into holes as tight as four inches, meaning you can take almost two full raccoons up your ass. It's some, like, joke. Um, seven. <laughs> page. Seven. Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's, that's, that's like, that's maybe what, like, maybe like this? Yeah, bro. That's what I'm saying. If you're watching the YouTube. Yeah. Listen. Peep it. A fist? That's amateur hour for some of these people, bro. This kind of thing. To do the Lysol can is wild, but That's, it's not yeah. that wide. It makes the Lysol can look like amateur work too. Dude, I, I knew this. I knew this guy in the Marine Corps. A lot of things have been weird in the Marines. <laughs> this dude told me one time he had a, he had a girlfriend that used to like um, to put her finger in his ass. In his ass. In okay. his ass. And I remember him telling me this story, and I was like, dude, like, do you like that? And then he goes. No, he goes, doesn't do anything for me, but like she gets off on it. Okay. But I remember walking away from there going, I think that would turn me off. Like me, like me if personally. Somebody put a finger in your ass, it might turn you off. Like, yeah, like if the girl wanted to do that, I'll be like, no, like, no, I'm not really, like, I'm not into that. But he just sort of went through it. But he her. was, but he was going like, well, it, it, it makes her nuts, like sexually. Uh, I could see that. So he was like, "Yo, take, I'm, you take I'm willing, right? Yeah, 
the trade off is, but yeah, <laughs> fucking a, bro. Do you be like, you be like, do you wait when that happens? This other thing happens. This other thing is uh, something I'm willing it's to pay awesome. a lot yeah, for. Right. Bro. Yeah, right. I can see that. Be like, fuck it. Why not, bro? But a fist. <laughs> or a mortar shell, or a. M- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you stick a pinky near me. I'm. <laughs> I might just start crying. <laughs> or not. I might be, be like, your boy, and I might be like, bro, that it's actually not bad. <laughs> can you can you shave that nail off? <laughs> <laughs> Skin snagged on the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what these women go through. You got shitty nails and you finger in it too. I apologize to y'all, man. We're we're nasty. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> staying with like the same theme. This this chicken line. I mean, this is sort of the story's from Mississippi, so it's kind of on brand for Mississippi. But oh, also, yeah. I feel like this could happen to any of us. Okay. So I don't want to make too much fun of her. But um, she went on Facebook Live. Uh, okay. but she was she was being taken to Pound Town, bro. Her her, her husband was was uh, uh digging her out, and she accidentally hit the go live on Facebook. So she basically streamed her cheeks getting split. Uh, so hold on. So is he like is he eating her? No, they're having to, like he's just he's taking a. Pound he's just Town, going bro. in. Yeah, he's going okay, in. Okay, okay. Now it's you can't see it. You can hear her. Because okay. the, the phone goes down, whatever, blah, blah. But she leaves it on, clearly. She goes <laughs> live. <laughs> you know, her dad sees her go live. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You get the alert, and it's yeah. like fucking Susie yeah. goes live. And he's like, oh, like, yeah, oh what's what she, she doing? See what she doing. Oh, bro. Oh, wow, man. Even, Who's it? Is it worse for the dad or the daughter? Ah, that's a great question, bro. It's probably, it, I mean, it's probably, you know, equally as appalling to both. I'm, but I'm never opening an alert for my daughter ever. Ever again? Ever. No, just in general. Like, from like, here on out, I don't even want that shit. Dad, to be, did you see me go live this weekend? Like, nope. nope. I don't want it. Nope. I don't want to. I erase Facebook. Yep. I'm a, a, a <laughs> matter of fact, I turn those notifications <laughs> off. I don't even think we're friends. <laughs> I defriended you last week. <laughs> I put up about? with you in real life. I don't need you. In, I don't need you in cyberspace, <laughs> bro. How weird! If you, if it was your son though, would you feel? Uh, you would obviously feel differently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel well, like I, if it was my it would be son, funny. I feel like if it was my son and she was too quiet, I'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, son, let me yeah. let me tell you how it's done. I ain't hear your name once, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> like, making us look bad. Be like, she's too quiet, dumb. She's too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She sound muffled, son. You don't need that. You need somebody with a little more enthusiasm. <laughs> or be like, ew, you like that? You <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would that make you feel some type of way if that shit happened to you? Like, and what? Like, like my mom? No, nah, like, uh, yeah, like, yeah. You, give me the, give me a scenario. You, you and your wife, you, one of y'all goes live and y'all okay. having sex, and okay. your whole family. Like, I think something like forty some people saw. Or, oh no, I wouldn't care. At least, yeah, I don't think I would either, bro. Bro, I've been married twenty seven years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. It, it, it don't matter if it's if it's mommy, daddy, <laughs> what if you get a light saw can't put in yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, uh, my account got hacked. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> they be like, well, we saw you on there. Uh uh-uh. uh. He got the, the the face implant. You know how these you know how these <laughs> these deep fakes work now. This damn Photoshop. That's not me. <laughs> that was an NFT. <laughs> like what's that? <laughs> I don't even moan like that. <laughs> Yo, I don't know, man. How I would. Uh, I don't think I would care. On the I, on I feel, on the spray can. No, no, no. Just in general. Oh, uh, oh you mean if, if something... Oh, that's a tough one, man. Because I feel like if I'm into that kind of shit... <laughs> listen, that's just what I'm You're into, like, bro. Fuck y'all. 
<laughs> be like, y'all didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> but y'all, some of y'all into some weird shit. I don't judge. But fuck. Yeah, that's a great question, bro. You'd be like, listen, enjoy it or log off. Yeah, but log off, bro. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's a great question. You be getting the comments and shit yeah. flying up. I think it just depends, bro. It depends if you can see or hear. I think that does make a big difference. If you can see it or hear it, I think it makes a big difference, bro. Like, You mean for them or for you? For me, how I would feel. Like people seeing you and yep. hearing you. I don't know. I guess it could be more embarrassing if they heard you for some. Uh, In that situation, bro, I don't, think, I don't think it matters. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't think I care. <laughs> I mean, you showed me some shit today that I was fucking rolling <laughs> on, man. <laughs> You gotta tell that story. We can be re- remain anonymous, goddammit. But you gotta tell that story right now. <laughs> that shit was so good, y'all. My boy. Okay, we gonna keep it anonymous, but we we supposed to go golfing this weekend. He hits me up this morning like, yo, I fucked up my back. And then his uh his excuse is like, yo, I was chasing my dog in my backyard naked. <laughs> and I, like what? And I yeah, bro. So immediately I'm like, bro, just tell me you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yo, I was chasing my dog in the backyard. He was trying to get out of possum. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm naked. It's on video. I can't show it to you. I'm going to have to kill you. Whatever. Uh, so, so I heard him up like, yo, video or it didn't happen. And uh, sure enough, bro, he sends me still shots of him ass naked <laughs> in his backyard, bro. Yo, the best part about it is there's a shot where you can see the moment he gets hurt. <laughs> It's so good. I'm like, bro, you got to submit that to somewhere. It's so good. Yo, and there's a shot that's like full frontal, and he draws his dick. (laughs) It's so good, bro. Dude. Oh, my God, man. Tell him. And if he didn't didn't know already, you got to tell him. The possums are fine, bro. And if you're naked... Let the fucking dog eat the possum, bro. Yeah, po- yeah. We were talking about it. It like possums don't do shit. Yeah, they don't. They do anything. look crazy mean. They won't yep. bite. They won't scratch. They'll literally either hiss or play dead. Yeah, right? that, those are the two defense mechanisms. <laughs> and this guy is running around his backyard. It's so I'm good. assuming he has a privacy fence. Yeah, yeah. He's got like a whole fence there. Yeah, right there. and he's running. <laughs> it's so funny, bro. But he then he, then he tells me like I'm I'm hysterically laughing and I, I, I message him whatever. And then he goes, Nah, bro, I got different angles. And, and he starts sending me all these different angles from the different cameras in his backyard. And they literally got him as bro. When I say ass naked, people, I mean no socks. No hat, <laughs> nothing, bro. Ass naked, and he's, he's running around he's the fucking backyard. <laughs> I was crying. I've never laughed so hard, bro. I was crying. <laughs> I was like, bro, just tell me you don't want to go golfing. <laughs> he hits me with the I was like, oh shit, you weren't lying, bro. Oh my god, I, I've I, the fact that that shit was even real was hysterical to me, man. Oh my god. <laughs> That was phenomenal. And this shit was at like, he sends me this at like 7.45 this morning. He tells me the story, <laughs> right? He doesn't send me the 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 clips until about an hour later, but the original text comes like pre-8 a.m. I'm like, <laughs> bro, you ass naked, pre-8 a.m., full sprint in your backyard. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> if I happen to sleep naked, and then walk my dog or let my dog out in my backyard and he's chasing a possum. I'm letting it go, bro. Bro, I'm not even answering. Have you ever answered your door like naked or no. morning wood? You know, like you got boxes on or things. I'm trying to think, bro. I think I did in boxes one time when a Jehovah Witness came over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing it in boxes if I got like a mid chub going. I'm a grower, not a shower, bro. So I gotta, I gotta be like, <laughs> you gotta rub it like. I gotta rub times. it a little bit, and then I might answer the door and be like, "What's up? <laughs> you, you here to tell me about our Lord and Savior? <laughs> What's good? <laughs> you got the head poking out the bottom of the boxes. How <laughs> <laughs> you tuck it up into the waistband, and you got the head popping. <laughs> uh, bro, I'm not. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, there's not a whole lot of shit. There's nothing that important that i'm doing ass naked outside nope 
Like I'm not chasing, bro. My dog decides to go chase something, even if it's a possum. Even if I thought it could do something, I'm be like, bro, that's your problem. <laughs> you don't want chasing the fucking. I'll possum. be back. Yep. <laughs> Guess who's not taking you to the vet if you get your face ripped off? <laughs> you better recover like the rest of the animals do in nature. You better figure that shit out. <laughs> How we doing on time, bro? We're hour nine in, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Yo, tell them where they can find us, man. <laughs> if you're not following us already on uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or at the Carbon Footprint Podcast. On uh, TikTok, we're at Carbon Footprint Podcast. Uh, and then man listening we're on fuck man everything amazon music everything. stitcher yep. spotify google podcast uh tune in jill savin ghana uh pot chaser a bunch of other shit i never heard of pocket cast but like literally if it's out there we're on it if there's something that you prefer that we're not on hit us up we'll put it on there shout out to everybody who follows us now man there's been people you know so, uh watching it on youtube and uh actually i got the the whole summary of youtube today um, about like the annual views and all that shit, yeah. and, and and definitely, I mean, obviously, way higher than last year. Um, and yeah, the fact that you guys take time out is, is pretty dope. So pretty yeah, dope and show. and and I know we get we you know we get hit up from time to time, and and if you know if we are making your drives to work easier, um, or or your days easier, I mean that that that's what we're here yeah. for. So we really appreciate you guys, and we will see you next week. See you next week. Peace. Peace.